Hello and welcome to O State TV live from Walk Around. We're on the top floor of the Student Union parking garage, and behind us you can see thousands of people roam in the streets of, of University Avenue. I'm Austin Pole, joined by Paige Davis and Hannah Walsh. So guys, homecoming is finally here. I know, I'm so excited. This is my first homecoming walk around and I've been here for four years. That's crazy. I grew up coming here even when I was little. Wow, amazing. Many times. Walk around is in full effect right behind us. And after you see all the all the house decks, head over to GIA for homecoming and hoops. America's greatest homecoming celebration continues tomorrow. Start your morning at 8.45 a.m. Central Time with Inside OSU with Burns Hargis. President Hargis will be live with some special guests at the starting point of tomorrow's Sea of Orange Parade. Then, of course, the parade itself, a homecoming tradition since 1930, will start at 9 a.m. on Main Street. We will broadcast both of these events live on O-State TV. And, of course, the highly anticipated matchup tomorrow night. The Cowboys squaring off against the Longhorns at 7 o'clock over at Boone Pickens Stadium. Safety remains a huge priority for OSU PD and the police department. There will be 70,000 people crowded here in Stillwater for this homecoming weekend. And the number one concern is your safety, of course. I talked with OSU PD about what they plan on doing to keep us safe and how you can contact them if you need help. Thousands of people are flooding the streets of Stillwater for America's greatest homecoming. And it is important to know that OSU Police Department and the Stillwater Police Department is taking necessary precautions to keep us safe. Chief of Police Leon Jones says that it is a lot of area to download the Orange Shield app, which is available on Android and iPhone. With a better look at just how packed the streets are, Kenzie Lee is right on University Avenue. Ken Nowhere else. Right here in the center. Hey. We're live. Hi, and welcome to University Avenue. I'm here now with Jaden and Bailey from Zeta. And right now we have thousands of OSU fans gathered together from all of Oklahoma to take a look at these extraordinary house decorations by, done by the Greek students. And they have outdone themselves this year as they do every year. So guys, how much time and preparation goes into making these house decorations? Oh my goodness, every member pumps like 10 hours, give or so a week since the beginning of September. But our homecoming directors start in January. They've been planning this, making everything work. So really it's honestly countless. There's so much time that goes in. So what can you tell us about some of the elements involved in this one behind us? And actually, these Zeta girls helped with Sigma News house decorations right now, which is the one you see behind us, which is Disney-themed. So um, Bailey, tell us about some of the elements. So actually, this uh, element with that is the um, newspapers, we worked on it last night at All Night Pump. So we started at 3 p.m. And uh, it didn't get finished this morning until 9 a.m. So we were right down to the minute. Um, and we can point out where we pumped last night. And it's really cool. Um, as well as our Ferris wheel. Apparently, you can sit on it. And it's completely working. So And it's, yeah, completely safe. Um, but we, we love our house tech. And it's our first time getting to see it completely up, which is so beyond cool. So what's your guys' favorite element of your house decoration? Oh, definitely the Ferris wheel with all the names of the Disney characters on the seats. That was like such a subtle touch that really is just so cute and so unique. I agree. All right, well, we're going to go ahead and take it to break, so we'll be right back after this. Burns Hargis on the show.
Joining us now is OSU President Burns Hargis. President Hargis, thank you so much for taking the time to stop by with us. Our pleasure. It's so, great to be here. So this is your 11th year, uh, 11th homecoming here as OSU President. What's your favorite part about it? Oh, there's so many. I mean, you got the, of course, Die in the Fountain is fun, and then you've got all the decorations and the, and the food drive, and of course, you have to walk around, and we've had a special dedication of a new uh, statue, a sculpture over here at the Mother's Garden and then the Stillwater Strong Memorial for the victims of uh, from three years ago. And then walk around, I don't know how many people we got out here, it's got to be 100,000. And they, they won't all fit in the stadium. And it's great, the parade tomorrow is going to be fantastic. We got Barry Sanders as our Grand Marshal with wow. his offensive line, the, the Way Pigs or whatever they call themselves. <laughs> So that's going to be great, and then uh, then the victory over Texas is going to be great. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, of course, President Hargis, what does it mean to you to see so many fans and alumni come back home for homecoming? Oh, it's it's wonderful, and it's really important because a lot of them had not been here. I just talked to two that hadn't been here for 30 years. Wow. And they they can't believe it. I mean, they're completely blown away about how this place looks, and yeah. all the people, and the, the new houses. And, New buildings and it's just it, it, the campus just looks great. And after all, you can't beat this weather. <laughs> it feels amazing outside today. It really is. <laughs> Good. President Hargis, what do the alumni mean to this university? Well, they they actually provide a lot of the support to this university and a lot of the energy, and they hire a lot of our grads. So uh, the alumni are vitally important. We have 250,000 alums at OSU. And they have given back generously as state support has declined. The alums have really stepped up and helped us out a lot. So they're very, very important. And I, I hope they're having a great time. That's awesome. I bet they are. So we're sitting right across from the Midnight uh, Performance Arts Center and the Greenwood School of Music. Are there any other major plans that are in the works coming up that you can tell us about? Well, there's, we're, we're working on a uh, campus art museum that would go right in that same area. Mm -hmm. So that'll kind of complete the arts, uh, the arts center, or the district, we'll call it. The McDyce Center, as you know, will open in October of 2019 with the New York Philharmonic. Mm -hmm. It has a $50 million performance endowment, and uh, that means we'll have Broadway plays here. We'll have uh, big orchestras coming through, great acts, all genres of music. It'll be fantastic. Uh, you got the new Wesley Center here. You got my old fraternity house right there. <laughs> so anyway, it's a great night. Absolutely. Thank you so much once again, President Hargis. Coming up very shortly, we're going to take a short break, but you are watching O State TV live from Walk Around. Go, folks. There are many aspects of OSU's homecoming that go into making it one of the greatest in the nation. One of the biggest attractions, however, and the star of the show tonight sits right in front of the Greek houses. Walk around the house decks. The tradition began when the Greek community decorated their houses with ribbons or banners nearly 80 years ago. 
Fast forward to today, and the tradition has only grown. But this growth doesn't happen overnight. So pairings are made official in early February, and then immediately after that, directors will spend about 20 to 30 hours a week designing the deck and planning out the fall semester. The fraternity and sorority have a budget of $13,000 total. Some of that money goes towards the most important aspect of the deck, pomping. Pomping is essential to the deck because when it's done well, the message of the deck is better portrayed to alumni and community members in a way that no other school can. Uh, the bright and colorful pomp is what makes OSU's homecoming the greatest in the nation. A lot of pomp is used to create just one screen. And the total amount of tissue paper used on the entire deck might surprise some people. This year we are actually triple pomping, which means we place three pieces of pomp on top of each other in a star pattern, which means that we use about 3.75 million pieces of pomp, which will come out to roughly 1.25 million squares on the chicken wire. It is all for the annual homecoming walk around where fraternities and sororities can finally display their decks. Roughly 70,000 people walk all over campus to admire the homecoming decks the Greek community makes. Greek members spend around 2,500 hours a week pomping between both the fraternity and the sorority to create a screen just like this one. After the deck is complete and homecoming is here, the feeling Greek members have is unlike anything else. It's a feeling of being more than just in the sorority that I'm in and being proud of that and more the fraternity that we're paired with. It's a feeling of an OSU legacy that will continue to live on. OSU's tradition of homecoming is the brightest and best in the nation. For O State TV, I'm Austin Paul. Seeing all the house sex is truly a sight to behold. There are no other homecomings that can compare to the size of Oklahoma State's. Wow, I can't believe that all of this is made out of tissue paper. I know, and they spend so much time in all the decorations too, it's crazy. 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 <laughs> well, Stillwater population almost doubles throughout homecoming week. It's not good just for school spirit, but also for the local economy. Store doors jingling and cash registers opening are common sounds you can hear during the week of OSU homecoming because Stillwater business is booming. Businesses such as Dupree Sports, the Atherton Hotel, and Eskimo Joe's become the destination spot to the homecoming crowd and keep the money flowing in, in their own way. The Friday of walk around and Saturday of homecoming are probably two of our five busiest days of the year. We're full staffed, ready for action. Dupree Sports not only stays busy with the heavy inflow of shoppers, but also by supplying sorority and fraternity members with custom apparel and tissue paper, also known as pomps, used to construct their homecoming decorations. Among apparel stores like Dupree's who are fully staffed are places who are fully booked, places such as the Atherton Hotel. We release rooms by like a big email blast a few months before um, and then people call as soon as they get that email and can make reservations. It gets booked within, I think this year, within 10 minutes it was booked. So. Hotels are jam-packed during this week of homecoming, but they aren't the only ones either. Restaurants will see an increase in people and profit, especially Stillwater staple Eskimo Joe's. With Eskimo Joe's being one of Stillwater's most hop-in places during homecoming week, you're probably wondering, how am I going to get a table? On Saturday, since it's a game day, we have open seating, and so um, we don't necessarily, uh, we don't take reservations and, and we don't seat the table. So, um, you know, Joe's will be packed, it'll probably be standing room only, and you just kind of hover, if you will. Eskimo Joe's will have a special game day menu and stay open until 2 a.m. on Saturday. For O State Report, I'm Hannah Walsh. Joe's will also have a tailgating atmosphere outside the restaurant for those who can't get a seat inside on Saturday. Now, reporting live on the University Avenue is Scout Deer and Kinsey Lee. You're fine. I do that all the time. Okay, I like you, We're here live from OSA TV by University Avenue, and I'm here with Gentry Holtz from the OSU basketball team. So, Gentry, so well, I just started, but this one's pretty good. I really like Disney, so yeah, it might be hard to beat. I totally agree. So, and I'm here with two sorority women that helped pump this uh, this week. What's your favorite part about homecoming? 
it definitely has to be walk arounds and going around to see all the different houses and what they've come up with over the past couple of months it's awesome all right and what about you yeah i love seeing all the work and just ha seeing everyone come out and celebrate america's greatest homecoming go pokes <laughs> All right, so what have you done What have you done so far here at Homecoming, and what do you plan to do? Do you plan to go to the parade tomorrow? Yes, yeah, I plan to be there. Yeah. So have you ever done anything with the OSU girls basketball team, like, involved with parade? Have you ever been in the parade with those? We haven't. Normally we have practice during that time, but um, several years we've gone by to some of the houses and just tried to support them and show them that we appreciate what they're doing. Awesome. All right, well, that does it for us, so we'll take it back to you guys up in the Union Garage. So coming up next, uh, there's going to be a new set of people joining you guys, but you're, listening, you're watching O State TV live from Walk Around. There's an app for that, the Orange Connection app. Get the latest updates on homecoming this weekend and OSU throughout the year. Download now at orangeconnection.org forward slash app. Homecoming is one of OSU's greatest and most cherished traditions, and thousands of current students and alumni are helping to sustain it with the Homecoming and Student Programs Endowment. Help the OSU Alumni Association preserve this treasured event for future generations of Cowboys by contributing today. Your support will help keep our homecoming America's greatest for many years to come. Visit orangeconnection.org forward slash endow homecoming for details, and thank you. Be social at homecoming. Use the official hashtag OKStateHC when posting on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Follow the OSU Alumni Association at OKStateAlumni to stay connected at homecoming and throughout the year.
Welcome back to OSA TV live here at Walk Around. I'm Emily Bjorkman alongside Kirsten White and Victoria Riviera. Now, Victoria, it's an absolutely beautiful day to be doing Walk Around right now. Tell us a little about the weather going into this weekend's game. So after a chilly and rainy week here out in Stillwater, the football gods were definitely looking out for us. Tomorrow's forecast looks clear from the parade to kickoff. The day warms up, but you might want to bring a sweater to the parade, but you'll be good after the tailgates. <laughs> Your kickoff temperature is sitting pretty right at 70 degrees. Oh, well, I am looking forward to a great game against Texas. Now, before we get into football, though, we have to get into what's going on right now, which is homecoming. We are joined by homecoming uh, exec director Brooks McKinney. Brooke, thank you so much for joining us here today and taking time out to come talk to us. Uh, so tell us a little bit about your role as homecoming director. Yes, yeah, so I'm the executive for homecoming. So basically my job is just making sure that the proper planning and execution of homecoming and how much work goes into making America's Greatest Homecoming Way what it too is? Much. <laughs> no, we probably spend about, um, the executive team as a whole probably spends about 12 to 15 hours a week in the office starting from September. And we start planning for homecoming in January. So it's a 10 month planning process. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Um, tell me what your favorite part about homecoming is. My favorite part about homecoming is probably tonight, just because so many alumni get to come back and um, just celebrate homecoming and celebrate OSU and see all of their friends. And it's just a great atmosphere to be around. So tonight is probably my favorite night. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Brooks, for joining us here live on O-State TV. We're going to take a short break, and then we'll see you right back here live on O-State TV. Celebrate OSU's fame all year round with a membership in the OSU Alumni Association. Join today to support our alma mater, receive great benefits, and stay connected to our cowboy family. Visit the Homecoming Hub for details or join on the Orange Connection app. Celebrate OSU's fame all year round with a membership in the OSU Alumni Association. Join today to support our alma mater, receive great benefits, and stay connected to the Cowboy family. Your membership will also support programs like America's Greatest Homecoming Celebration. Join online at orangeconnection.org forward slash join or by downloading the Orange Connection app. Thank you for your support and go Pokes! Guys, hey, you know what time's your flight? I've got an hour until I'm supposed to board. All right, we have things to do. Is there any cancellations? I thought she was your best friend. Yeah, she was. But they attached a dog head on the man's body. Where's your backpack? Mom. You know what? I think I'm going to sew your backpack to your back. What do you think? Welcome back to O State TV. We just got done talking to Brooks. Now we're going to get into a little bit about like what kind of the biggest part of walk around is right now, and that's those big homecoming decks right behind us. Yeah. So kind of first impressions. What's everyone thinking so far? Well, each house is different, and they all have a different spin on the theme. And I just love walking around and just seeing what people have created. They've put so many hours into those decks, so many hours of hard work and creativity and it's just so beautiful to have it all come together tonight. Yeah, I saw a couple house decks when I was walking up here, but this is actually my first homecoming walk around and I always hear people talking about pomping, so I, I was just amazed about all the creativity the Greek life put in to making this special. Kind of off creativity, I do think it's interesting to always kind of see where uh, warehouses choose to take the theme of Cowboys Right On. So where are they taking you? You've got a Disney theme, you've got an aviation theme, you've got a Willy Wonka theme. So I mean, you've got all sorts of things going on tonight based off of, you know, the simple phrase of Cowboys Right On. Exactly. <laughs> well, there's a familiar face in town this weekend as Homecoming's Grand Marshal. Barry Sanders, also known as the greatest running back in school history, made his return to Stillwater for homecoming. The retired running back played 10 NFL seasons and went on to be a Hall of Famer, but only after donning the orange and black for three seasons back in the 80s. All 
sit. Although this weekend is going to be clear and sunny, wonderful weather. Uh, two weekends ago, when we started our homecoming traditions for our uh, basketball bonanza, it was not sunny. So I took a look about how basketball bonanza uh, was in the Colvin Annex instead of football frenzy on the field. While the OSU football team was having a bye week, the homecoming traditions were beginning in Stillwater. For the second year in a row, football frenzy was replaced with a basketball tournament to keep participants out of the rain. First and foremost, we would like to play football because it is football season, but obviously we can't control the weather. Luckily, the homecoming exec learned a few lessons when they had this problem back in 2017. We work very closely with intramurals. They're really good about working with us um, and changed it to basketball bonanza. We actually made the announcement on Wednesday. The Greek community had to change their football teams into basketball teams in just three days. Whether it is basketball bonanza or football frenzy, this homecoming tradition is unlike any other. And it's really fun and exciting to see all the teams compete and with all the homecoming spirit. After two days of basketball in the Colvin Annex, the top two teams moved to a larger venue. In Gallagher Iba Arena, the top two teams battled it out for the championship trophy. The women of Kappa Alpha Theta and the men of Alpha Gamma Rho placed first in basketball bonanza. For Kappa Alpha Theta and Alpha Gamma Rho to win first place in basketball bonanza, it will give them a significant advantage in the homecoming sweepstakes. We will find out who wins homecoming sweepstakes this Saturday at halftime. I am Kirsten White for the O-State Report. Congratulations to the men and women of Kappa Alpha Theta and Alpha Gamma Rho. We look forward to seeing who will win the homecoming sweet stakes tomorrow at halftime during the football game. Well, you've seen them all week donning their special name tags and their white sashes, but what exactly does it take and what's the process behind becoming that special homecoming queen and king? Here's a, pro here's a closer look at that special process for one lucky man and woman. It's a tradition as old as homecoming itself and it's an honor two lucky OSU students will claim during the football halftime celebration. Homecoming royalty become the face of Oklahoma State for an entire year. However, the process begins long before the kickoff is even announced. Applications were due the beginning of September. A few weeks later, 15 were invited back for one-on-one -on -one interviews. Our main thing that we tell the judges to remember as they are scoring the documents is this is not the same award as outstanding senior, senior of significance, things like that. It is more to be a representative that is spirited, that is passionate about OSU. I got the email that I got at Top 15 interview. I think I was a little bit shocked because I thought how much of an honor that they would see this in me. Those interviews happened back in September, and after flipping through pages and pages of applications and minutes of video, they finally had their decision. However, for us family and friends, we don't find out until a whole month later. They actually don't tell me, even though I'm in charge of them, um, who the winner is because they don't want me to accidentally slip up and tell them. Until the winner is announced, the court will make various appearances throughout the week, representing the orange and black and eagerly waiting to find out the results. I never have any idea who's going to win because they're really great individuals. For the O-State Report, I'm Emily Bjorkland. Best of luck to the 10 lucky men and women, as we're just 24 hours shy now of finding out who the lucky winners will be. But for now, let's head on down to our reporter, Kelsey Briggs and Madison Bradford, who join us live on University Avenue. We are live here at University Avenue, where the street is about to pack up, and we're here with OSU fan gentry. So, uh, what's your favorite part about homecoming? Uh, just seeing all the boards, everything is just amazing. Really. Could you tell us your favorite part about Walk Around? The fact that this is all made from tissue paper. I, it really is unbelievable. They all did a good job. It truly is incredible. Yes, it's truly amazing to see all their hard work. So we're going to go back to you, Victoria.
Okay, we're here back with Scout, and Scout took a closer look into the multiple people who participate in homecoming. I took a walk around campus this week and found out that homecoming's for everybody. Each year, thousands of Cowboy fans flood into Stillwater to celebrate America's greatest homecoming. But how does this affect our local population of students? Students all over campus find ways to get involved with the biggest week of the year. Some participate by dyeing the fountain orange, others by making signs with their communities, or even just partaking in the day-to-day -day events that come with homecoming. I'm most excited for the energy on campus. Uh, it's really cool to go to class during homecoming week and see all the signs and people seem to be smiling more and wearing more orange. While some students find homecoming to be a more exciting and relaxing week, many involved with Greek life can find homecoming to be a little more hectic. Involved with frenzy, pomping, um, we do a lot of the carnival uh, food drive as well and then also we also have Follies. Greek life has been hard at work partaking in all of these activities while also making the homecoming decks for the community to enjoy for only 24 hours. However, the finished project is extremely rewarding. Start hanging all of the, uh, the whole project. It's very, you feel very accomplished and that everyone worked together to create like that whole big picture. At the end of the day, Homecoming is a time for Cowboy fans to come together and celebrate all that America's greatest homecoming has to offer. Regardless of how you celebrate America's greatest homecoming, go Pokes and go OSU. From the O State Report, I'm Scout Deer. Oklahoma State homecoming is a wonderful time for Cowboy fans to get together and celebrate America's greatest homecoming. Thank you. Well, thank you so much for joining us here today, Scout. When we, we're going to take a short break, and when we come back, we're going to take another look at another side of homecoming, what you should be wearing as you're walking around and attending the football game tomorrow. You're watching O-State TV live at Walk Around Here at America's Greatest Homecoming. The OSU Alumni Association would like to thank the many members of the OSU Interfraternity and Panhellenic Councils for their generous support of the Homecoming and Student Programs Endowment. Your contributions are helping to keep our homecoming America's greatest. Thank you. Welcome back to America's greatest homecoming. We're here at the walk around. So what are you guys wearing to the game? I haven't exactly decided yet. I mean, there's always the classic an orange and black outfit that you can kind of throw together, but I know leather is really in right now. So I, Yeah, I felt like it was kind of tricky because the weather has warmed up recently. So I know toward the beginning of the game it will be a little bit warmer, but then when that sun goes down, I know I'm going to be chilly, so yeah, I'm definitely <laughs> bringing a jacket. It's time to break. It's sweater weather officially. It's here. <laughs> exactly. Well, homecoming is here, but have you figured out what you're wearing to the game? While some are rocking the vintage Sanders jerseys, others might choose to be a little bit more high fashion. Here's a take of what elements to include when picking out the right fit to homecoming. Choosing the right outfit for an outdoor football game can be a little tricky. While incorporating style and team spirit is idea, there also needs to be a balance of comfort and the ability to adjust to Oklahoma's crazy weather. Allie, a sales and design associate at J. Cole, says what she considers when choosing her game day fit. I usually try to take into consideration pieces that are going to be versatile. Um, I think like neutral skirts, you could do denim or black. You want to make sure that you're comfortable so that way you don't feel any discomfort throughout the night or anything like that. And you also want to make sure that you're confident in what you're wearing because um, confidence is key and that will make you um, feel just great in anything. Comfort, climate, and confidence. Three C's to consider when choosing your game-winning outfit. When you shop in Stillwater, though, you might run into someone wearing the same thing as you, but that's no problem. I spoke with a design student, and she tells us how to rock those same basic pieces and make them unique. Accessorizing your outfits, you can always add beads, you can add like necklaces, bracelets, anklets, or booties if it's cold. Um, I would say a splash of orange always. 
definitely. And if you have too much orange, you can add a basic color like black or seam, or you can do crop tops with your shirts or add trimmings. It's just kind of up to you. On your if you haven't already chosen your game day winning fit, take advice from the fashion masters and consider the three C's. You'll be sure to win. For O State TV, I'm Victoria Ribeiro. So with the weather being a little iffy, I kind of had trouble picking out what I'm going to wear too. Um, first I was like, I think I should wear jeans and then, then I was like, I should wear a dress. So I wasn't really sure at all, but I think I got something now, now that's going to be 70 degrees. But you've noticed that the fountain in front of Edmund Lowe is flowing orange water. Have you seen that? I have. It's a great tradition that we have here. Yeah, well, this OSU tradition kicks off homecoming week each year. Madison is standing by on University Avenue with the story. A tradition that's been home happening for almost 20 years is just as exciting now as it was back then. This fountain was filled with OSU spirit to kick off the homecoming festivities. With homecoming just less than a week away, some OSU fans can't contain their excitement. The countdown to homecoming began with the homecoming executive team pouring the dye into the fountain. The executive team takes pride in dyeing the fountain orange each year and is excited to start the events of homecoming. It's a great way to kick off homecoming week. It's a great way to kind of show your school spirit right off the bat. This Stillwater community has been coming to see this beloved tradition since 1999. Alumni and families have been surrounding the fountain to see the start of their beloved homecoming celebrations. To me, it's symbolic because as we see the fountain turn orange, uh, we see our community and our campus uh, really come to life over the, the week following that. It doesn't just take Stillwater community's excitement and OSU traditions to turn this fountain orange. It actually takes five gallons of hot water, 16.5 ounces of food coloring, electric orange food coloring that is. Yes, that's right, electric orange food coloring. Just like what you put in your icing to turn your icing orange. If you miss this year's dying of the fountain, don't worry, because you can see it next year and experience the beginning of the countdown to the homecoming celebration. This is Madison Bradford with the O State Report. Seeing it all over the students' social media accounts holds a very special place in the Orange Fountain as well as walk around. State TV live from Walk Around.
Welcome back to O State TV Live from Walk Around. I'm Taylor Hernandez here with Molly Chagru. And with us, we have a special guest, Blair Atkinson from the OSU Alumni Association. Hi, so, Blair, tell us what goes into making America's Greatest Homecoming what it is. You know, there are thousands of hours that go into making this America's Greatest Homecoming celebration. Um, our student executive team have spent countless hours since really this time last year. So they've been a wow. full year in planning and preparation. And then the students uh, with the fraternities and sororities in the same way. So it's a lot of hard work. Yeah, definitely. What do you think this celebration of our university means to our alumni? And what is your favorite aspect of the week? Okay, so I'll say Oklahoma State alumni are really different than any other alumni in the country. and. We are really the only university that has a tradition like this. And I'll tell you, it's part of our culture. Tradition is important to us. And this tradition is really key, I think, to really all of our alumni. My favorite part is dyeing the orange fountain. I love it. It kicks off homecoming week. And you see the water turn orange. And then in the coming week, you see campus turn orange. You see the community turn orange. So it's really a lot of fun. I also love homecoming and hoops which is tonight at 9 o'clock. So everyone join us for Homecoming in Hoops because it's a ton of fun and everyone will have a great time there. Awesome. Yes. Thank you so much for joining us. I know yes. you're super busy. So take, take some time. Enjoy this Homecoming I weekend. You deserve will. it thank after you all this preparation. So much. Yes, yeah. thank you. Yes. The Homecoming Parade is a staple in celebrating America's greatest homecoming. Thousands pack Main Street to see all of the floats. And this year, there are more than 120 entries. A reminder that the parade starts tomorrow at 9 a.m. and it moves north on Main Street from 9th Avenue to Hall of Fame Avenue. The Sea of Orange Parade was started nearly 90 years ago. I took a look back on the parade over the years. Let's move down and take a look at the OSU Homecoming Parade. It attracts thousands every year and it's one of the most well-known events in OSU history. But the famous Sea of Orange homecoming parade wasn't always that way. OSU didn't have its first official homecoming until 1920. Before that, it was part of the Harvest Carnival, starting in 1913. It wasn't until 1930 that the first ever homecoming parade made its way down Main Street. More than 17,000 alumni attended. It's one of the longest running traditions, not only with homecoming, but at OSU. So that makes it very unique. Um, it's been going on ever since the 1930s. And so people look forward to it every year. It's kind of some people's uh, kick off to homecoming in the day and being in still water and coming back. By 1946, the parade consisted of more than 50 floats six bands, and many other community entries. The parade route has changed a little bit over the years. Um, it used to start at 12th and now it starts at 9th. Um, it's always gone down Main Street. Um, it used to be more heavily attended with floats um, and not so many just random entries. So now we have a good mix of cars and floats and horses and motorcycles and things like that. But it really started as a float um, parade for people to showcase what they could build to show their OSU spirit. What started out as a humble gathering at the 1913 Harvest Festival Parade has turned into the Sea of Orange Parade we know today. More than 80,000 people attend OSU's homecoming activities, many of them coming to the parade on Saturday morning right here on Main Street. Other events such as the sign competition, football frenzy, and the chili cook-off have been added over time. But the Sea of Orange Parade is a classic tradition that Oklahoma State's homecoming just wouldn't be the same without. For the O-State Report, I'm Molly Chagru. OSU homecoming is certainly rich with tradition. So be sure to head down to the parade tomorrow morning before heading over to the tailgate. Now let's go down to University Avenue where Madison Dildine and Mally Jones are standing by. Good. I'm with Zach and Caesar, and they are members of the Kappa Sigma fraternity and they along with the rest of the Greek neighborhood have been up all night working on their decks. So guys, how does it feel to finally get to see all of your hard work pay off? It feels great. Um, you know, you grow with these guys and uh, you know, when you come together as a family to like for one common goal, it's it's a great feeling. Um, uh, what is your favorite part about homecoming? Uh, all the hard work that goes into it and seeing these great decks at the end of the day. That's the best part. Before you were students here at OSU, had you ever been to homecoming? Yes. So now that you are on the other side of it and students in fraternities, how does it feel to see everything just come together and 
does it make you appreciate how hard it is? Yeah. I mean, you really appreciate all the hard work we put in this. You know, it takes a couple months to do everything, and when it's all said and done, it's just it's a great feeling once you get it all done. Thanks, guys. We're going to send it back to you now at the Student Union Garage. Thanks, guys. The Cowboys will be donning these sweet throwback uniforms tomorrow to play the Longhorns in honor of the 30-year anniversary of the War Pig season. And, in fact, homecoming Grand Marshal Barry Sanders was a part of that team. But are those uniforms going to give us enough mojo to beat the Longhorns? i got a game preview for you. This is the Burnt Orange from Austin, Texas. The number six Longhorns are coming to town riding high following a bye week. The Oklahoma State offensive line has struggled in recent games to give Taylor Cornelius time in the pocket. Gundy previously described it as Cornelius having to run for his life. I asked Coach Gundy earlier this week how critical offensive line play was going to be against the Longhorns. You got to be balanced on offense. You know, we have to protect them at times. They're going to make plays too. They're good players. They have good coaches and guys get a chance to make plays. So they're going to make their plays. We need to be able to make ours. The Longhorns bye week could not have come at a better time for Sam Ellinger, who is nursing a sprained throwing shoulder. But if Ellinger gets the start tomorrow, the Cowboys will have their work cut out for them. The Texas quarterback is the textbook definition of a dual threat, posting over 1,500 passing yards and more than 300 yards on the ground this season. So, how have the Cowboys been preparing? Been preparing for the dual threat, his running capabilities and uh... We're just ready for either one. No matter if he plays or not, we're preparing for him. And if playing number six at home wasn't a big enough motivator, the game is at prime time on ABC. And it's homecoming, meaning 70,000 people will descend on Stillwater to fill Boone Pickens Stadium. I, th I think you just try and, you know, shut out all that uh, extra noise and, you know, extra pressure. For O-State TV, I'm Taylor Hernandez. All right, Molly, so it's a really highly anticipated game, like I was saying. What are your thoughts on tomorrow's matchup? I know some fans are worried, but what do you think? You know, my favorite thing about sports is that if we knew who was going to win, we wouldn't have a game. And I think that with all of the spirit here in Stillwater this week and all the alumni being back, I really think that something special is going to happen. I think so, and it is certainly a special atmosphere here. As you can see behind us, the thousands of people who are here. And I've got a pretty good feeling that most of them are going to the game tomorrow, so that's going to be one packed stadium. And in fact, we're about 24 hours away from kickoff right now. And a reminder that that game is on prime time at ABC, on ABC, excuse me. And you can listen to the game on the Cowboy Radio Network and kickoff is at 7 p.m. Now let's go back down to Madison Dildine and Mally Jones for one last look at University Avenue. Thanks, Molly. Fans have been out in full force today, getting a glimpse at all of the incredible homecoming decks, as well as enjoying some of the food trucks and reuniting with fellow Cowboy alumni. And here in a little bit, fans will start to go over to Gallagher Iba Arena for homecoming and hoops. The gates open at 8, but the event doesn't start until 9 o'clock. And it is open to the public, and it is free of admission, so you might want to head over there and get your seats. So both Spirit Squads will also be out in full force, giving you a glimpse into what it's like to cheer on the Cowboys. Back to you guys. All right, and you can really sense just how many people are here from that shot of them down there. Thank you guys for that. I cannot get over it. We see it. Ha it this happens every year. This is my third homecoming here, but it is truly, I just don't know how to describe it to people who go to different universities. My family's in town, and it's just, you can describe it as many, as many ways as you want, but really it's something you have to see to believe here. It really is. You really have to see it, and every year, even though I've been here every year, I just since my freshman year in 2014, I'm really just blown away at how much work everyone puts into it. And it really gives me such a sense of pride to be an Oklahoma State student. Yeah, and you can see all the alumni here. And I mean, it is packed out there. When they say 70,000 people descend on Stillwater, they are not lying. Well, thanks, thanks to everyone for joining us tonight. Um, we're so happy and we hope that you enjoy your homecoming weekend. I'm Molly Shagru. Thank you for joining us on O State TV. And I'm Taylor Hernandez. A reminder that we will be live tomorrow morning at the Sea of Orange Homecoming Parade. And you can catch Inside OSU with Burns Hargis at 845. Thank you, guys.